What is up everyone and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time you are seeing me, my name is Tom. I mostly post about my open university experience and today is no different. Um, today is the first of four videos I'll be doing. Um, last year I did like a year one review where I just talked about why I came across in my modules for that year. This year I'm going to do a video for each module. Um, it's just a bit easier, I can go a bit more depth without making it ridiculously long. Um, that being said, today's video is probably a little bit longer than normal because just what I'm going through and um, because of that I'm going on, I'm going on my webcam, not my DSLR because my DSLR has a 12 minute recording limit so instead of me stopping starting every 10-11 minutes just recording in one go with my webcam so if you've noticed the change is because of that basically. So today's video is about MST124. Um, MST124 is a first year maths unit. Uh, it is covered in several different degrees. Um, I'm a computer and IT student, but it is available in, in other degrees as well. Um, it's not a mandatory one. Doing maths unit is mandatory, uh, but you get picked between MST124 and I think it's MU123 might be wrong but um, basically the other one is more GCSE based uh, MST124 is like a mix between GCSE and A level based maths uh, there's no difference in terms of units or anything like that they're both a 30 unit module um, ideally taken in your first year like I say um, well it's a first year module you can't do four second year modules without doing that first so there's that so in today's video I will be talking through everything that you get with MST124 such as study materials and um, going through what units are my advice on studying uh, what my difficulties were what my easy parts were um, and yeah just everything in one general go basically if you see me looking to my left hand side apologize that's where my monitor is and I've just got a few things on there I want to make sure I cover. Um, so yeah. So let's start off with the first thing. Obviously MST124 is a maths unit, I've said that. It is GCC and A level based. Um, so it can be difficult. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I struggled with it the first time I did it, so I actually deferred it for the second year. Um, that means that instead of doing my degree of three years now, I have to do it over four years because Again, it's a first year module and you can't do more than four modules in a year. So if you are planning to do it full time and you want to get it done in a certain amount of time, um, make sure you are comfortable with doing it and try to not defer it. Otherwise it will effectively add on an extra year to your student, to your study time. Um, however, on the plus side, I didn't have to pay any more for it. Um, I don't have any more student debt for it. It was free to defer it for the next year. Um, but yeah, so it is slightly difficult. Um, yeah. Anyway. So study materials, that is what you get before you even the unit even begins, the module even begins. Um, you get an MST124 guide, um, which basically goes through the absolute basics of the unit, what units there are, TMAs, welcome stuff, what you need for it but basically I'm going to cover that anyway in this video I feel like I just made the camera shake but apologies um, it's a good idea to give that a read before your unit starts um, you usually get it I think you get all these materials like a good week or two maybe even longer before the module begins so plenty of time to read that try and read that like I said before um, I think it is included as one of the points due in the first two weeks on the um, on the study guide on the Open University website, um, so just get it read out of the way, and then after that you also get a MST one two four handbook. The handbook is full of like various um, formulas and basic tips on how to do stuff and basic methods. Very very important book when it comes to your exam. I will go through that in a bit why, but make sure you do not lose this. Um, yeah, you might not, when studying, you might not go through it. 
you might not even touch it for the full year but when it comes to the exam you'll want it um, and like I say I'll explain why um, in a bit the main four books you get this has got all your materials in it um, cleverly named book A, B, C and D um, they go in unit order let's put them over there without shaking the camera too much but yeah that's got all your study, study materials in it in terms of text read anyway um, goes through all the, all 12 units um, goes through various methods each method that you'll want each method that you know you'll need um, it effectively goes to a book per TMA and ICMA um, but there is a bit of overlap between TMA 3 I think might be wrong but I feel like there was a bit of an overlap between one of them anyway one TMA has like the last unit in one book and like the first two units in the second book but anyway but like I say it roughly works out as a book per TMA ICMA combination um, as this is a first year module actually I feel like I should explain what a TMA and ICMA is um, a TMA is a tutor mat assessment um, that is for maths anyway this course you get a set of questions you have to write out on the paper on pieces of paper or you can do it electronically if you want but I find writing on paper a lot easier especially for maths um, you write out the method show you working out and the example and stuff like that you do that for every single question you then take photos or scan um, I used an app that scans each page and then put into a PDF format. Uh, that is very important if you're sub sub uh, submitting it electronically it has to be a PDF. Um, I it's the only module I've ever used I've ever done that needs PDF but I'm I'm just presuming it's because of how they mark it how they can go right on it and say what you need to do. It's part of their um, it's how they mark it anyway so it needs to be a PDF like I said there's plenty of apps on your phone um, where you can just scan it and it'll build it up page by page and then give you one single PDF format at the end. I think I used Adobe Scan, uh, completely free to use uh, but either way you can use whichever method you want. You can go to a printer and scan it on the printer and then combine it into a PDF on your computer whichever is most comfortable for you but it has to be a PDF format anyway. As for a TMA, um, for this module you get four TMAs um, that are spread out throughout the year and yeah I'll get into a little bit more on them in a second but the ICMAs are interactive computer mat assessment I think might might not stand for that exactly I feel like it does but anyway it's a computer mat assessment uh, instead of putting all your method down or doing it on paper it's online uh, you get a set of questions you do all your working out on your paper if you need to and then you just put the single answer on the computer um, using their um, their symbols they have like central symbols for like times and stuff like use a star for times and blah 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 anyway you put the answer on the computer and you go through there you have one chance at submitting it uh, it'll tell you there and then if you've got it right or wrong but you have four of them as well um, separated throughout the entire module so yeah so basically yeah each book kind of covers, kind of equals to one per TMA, one book per TMA and ICMA. You also get um, a specimen exam paper, uh, which is literally what it says. It's just a an example of an exam paper. Has all the set of questions, which obviously it helps towards the end when you're doing your revision for your exam. Um, the answers to them are available online which they'll definitely point out to I, th I feel like it's accessible from the beginning it might not have I didn't look at it at first because you know a lot of it's not covered at the beginning but anyway the, the answers are available online so you can go through there work your way through it and then see if you can work out for yourself where you go right or wrong anyway uh, as far as I know that's all the material you get it's quite a lot of material compared to other units uh, you get it all at the beginning um, there's some modules where you'll get a book like every three months in WTA. you get all this right at the beginning so from the get-go you've got it which is good I find that quite handy 
Um, but yeah, so that's all the stolen material you get. Briefly covered uh, the ice. I've briefly talked about the TMAs and ICMAs. And I'll go into a bit more detail about it now. Overall, there's 12 individual units that you're covered throughout the entire year. Um, like I say, each book basically covers its set of units. For TMA 1, it's just unit 1 and 2. For TMA 2, it's units 3, 4, 5 and 6, which is the biggest amount of units covered in a, in a TMA, was TMA 2. TMA 3 is units 7 and 8. And TMA 4 is units 9, 10 and 12. Unit 11 is included in the books, but for this year, I believe, as was the first year anyway, it's a completely optional unit. You don't have to. You're not. It's not going to be on a TMA. It's not going to be an ICMA, and it's not going to be on your end of year exam. It's completely optional. If you want to study it, study it. If you don't, you're not missing out on something. It's not going to crop up as a big question at the end of the TMA or an exam or anything. It's completely optional. But that's there anyway, and I think that's covered in the last book. Completely optional. So, from my from what I remember, because this is over two years now that I've done this course, um, TMA 1 and 2 are more basic graphs and basic algebra, um, like GCSEs type covers. So they're covered in TMA 1. TMA 2 has trigonometry. I'm actually going to quick look, just to make sure I do it all right for you. Right here. Yeah, it covers functions, trigonometry, coordinate geometry and vectors and differentiation um, which I feel like was covered in TMA3 but apparently not hmm. no 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 yeah it's like the basics of differentiation is covered in TMA2 TMA3 just two units is um, differentiation methods and integration and integration methods for me and for a lot of people that I've seen online, like blog posts and stuff, TMA3 was the hardest one, which might be surprising because it's only two units. It's It covers a lot. It's quite a big, chunky two units. Um, I'm going to call it three because obviously it has something to do with unit six as well, differentiation. And then it goes into differentiation methods and integration. It's kind of three, but technically two. It's a big one and a lot of people struggle with it. That was my breaking point for my first year. I was absolutely fine with the first two un first two TMAs. Got to the third one and I really struggled with it and I was not comfortable putting in my work. So that's why I postponed it. So my advice is if you can give yourself as much time to study TMA three units um, and to go through the exam, uh, well, your TMA, um, yeah, I would give yourself as much time as possible from that, if you can, obviously. Uh, TMA4 is matrices, sequences and series, and complex numbers. Um, and TMA4 isn't as hard as TMA3. If It, it kind of works itself up, like TMA1's fairly easy, and TMA2 a little bit harder. TMA3 is really hard, and then TMA4 is... Not it's harder than TMA two, but not nearly as hard as TMA three. Which so I don't know. It's kind of a kind of like a nice break after TMA three. You have TMA four, so yeah, that's that. And then Unit eleven for anyone who is interested is Taylor polynomials. Taylor pol polynomials. Tom oh. Taylor polynomials. Probably saying that wrong. I'll put it up on the screen. Um. That's unit 11, like I said, completely optional. It's there in book D if you want it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, ICMAs, like I said, there's four ICMAs. Um, ICMA, the first one is literally just covered by unit one. It's the, I believe it's the first bit of work you put in. It is the first bit of work you put in. Um, ICMA two is units two, three, and four. Um, ICM, ICMA three is units five, six, and seven. Then the last ICMA is units 8, 9, 10, and 12. Um, you'll have noticed that they overlap with the TMA ones. So like I say, TMA 1 is just is 1 and 2. 
ICMA one is just unit one, whereas TMA two is three, four, five, and six. ICMA two is th two, three, and four. So there is a bit of an overlap, and it it covers throughout, and that is because they're staggered between each other. Um. So yeah, that's kind of why they overlap. And that's kind of why I said it kind of works out as a TMA per book, an ICMA per book, but there's some overlap anyway. Not going into that too much too, too much detail. Now, in terms of assessments, assignments, and stuff, and how often you hand them in, because obviously, as you've worked out, there's effectively eight pits of assignments throughout the year. It effectively works out as something is due every month from October to May, basically. Um, I had something due on the twenty third of October, seventh of November. 11th of December, 23rd of January, 26th of February, 13th of March, 1st of May, and then 7th of May. Uh, but that 1st of May could very well be the back end of April for next year. Um, and then, like I say, the 7th of May. So, and it takes it turns, starts off with ICMA, and then goes TMA, ICMA, and TMA, ICMA. So on. So it is effectively something is due every month. There's something due. Um, so it is a very, like, constant course so what does the open university say how long should you study for basically it's a 30 unit module and with that they expect well they advise between eight and ten hours per week um there's a lot of times where i did not spend eight to ten hours per week on this um the only time I would suggest that you definitely do spend eight to ten hours per week on it is when TMA three is coming up, um, and in turn the ICMA that also covers the TMA three options, they're the unit. Sorry, I would definitely spend eight to ten hours now on that. But throughout, it's it's completely dependent on your math skills and how quickly you pick things up. Um, you can read through an entire book in a day or so if you've got the time. Uh, if you if you're the type of person who can read so read some methods, and then you find your sword, you probably won't spend eight to ten hours a week on it. If you're the type of person who needs to reread a lot of things to go through, you probably do need to spend eight to ten hours per week. It's completely you know it completely dependent on your learning style and how you pick up things. As well as the books. There are also online tutorial clips on the Open University website. They're split into each unit and then you go through and there's like, I'm thinking there's at least 15 videos per unit of someone going through an example question, basically, and going through the method and writing it all down on the screen, which is very useful. I actually didn't know about this for the, like, the majority of the year until it came to my exam year, uh, until it came to me doing my exam. That's when I found out about that. If I found out about that sooner, I feel like it would have been a lot helpful because I'm a bit more of a visual learner. So if you're a visual learner as well, that's going to be a big help to you. Another part is that there are tutorials. Um, they are online and there are some in person, um, completely depending on where you live, where they'll be. I live in Wakefield, so I'm part of like the Yorkshire group and my tutor had in-person tutorials every now and again, not very frequent, but every now and again. Um, and I believe she had it in Leeds, one of the Leeds universities, I think, if you wanted to go completely optional. You don't have to go to any tutorials. You don't have to go to any online tutorials, completely optional, but they are there to help, obviously. The online ones are through software, free software called Adobe something. Again, I'll put it up, um, completely free. It's like an online chat room where you can, where the tutor can show their screen, uh, go through different scenarios and stuff. There's voice chat available so you can physically talk to your tutor if you want to. And there's also chat boxes as well as a webcam bit if your tutor wants to put their face on there. Most of them don't. I've only come across one tutor that did. Um, it was kind of nice to see a, the face to a voice, I suppose, but I, to be fair. If I was a tutor, I probably wouldn't put more common on either. Um, those online tutorials tend to take place in the evening, uh, weekday evenings, and then occasionally there's one on like a Saturday morning, like 
10 till half 11. Um, most most online tutorials are about an hour, an hour and a half long. Completely, like I say, completely optional. You don't have to go. You just book yourself on and you turn up. Um, it's completely random how many people will be there. At the beginning of the year, chances are there's going to be quite a lot. And then throughout the year, I think people tend to just drop out and not really go to the tutorials much, apart from maybe the exam bit. A few more people might turn up for the exam ones. But yeah, that's that. So, gone through the units, books, studies, TMAs and ICMAs. And then lastly is the exam. The exam is, obviously, it's, you have to take the exam. They they don't give you a choice of where your exam centre is. It is an in-person exam. You have to travel to the exam. Um, you have to pay for that travel. If that is a problem, you need to plan that out. I, I believe you find out in like March time where your exam centre is. Um, and then the exam's not due until June. It, it, it tends to be quite local. Last year, it would have been Leeds for me. Um, again, I live in Wakefield. That's fairly quite local, really. Um, it was in Leeds Hotel. That's right outside Leeds Station, train station. So if you get a train there, it's literally right there. It's absolutely fine. This year, it was in Bradford, which is, again, a little bit further away from me. But it was also a hotel right next to the train station again. So if I was to get a train through, I would have been there. All right, I'm not trying to then get a bus throughout the city. So from my experience, the exam centres tend to be fairly close to where you live and tend to, and tend to be fairly close to public transport. And at the moment, obviously, train stations that tend to look quite close to train stations. But again, it's, you know, it's you, you have no choice in where the exam centre is. Um, maybe if you phoned up and asked them to put you somewhere else, they might be able to, I don't know, um, they might say that's where everyone's going this year in your area you know you have to go there another thing to po point out for the exam is the exam is midweek um, last year I think it was on a Thursday this year it was on a Wednesday um, so if you are working full time part time whatever or you've got childcare to cover bear that in mind like I say you find out in March you've got plenty of time to book a day off or whatever but it will be um, it, yeah, it will be a midweek exam, it's not a, the weekend. All TMAs and ICMAs are due on the same day, which for this year was Wednesday. Um, for all of the modules and this module last year, it was on a Thursday. Don't know why they brought it to a Wednesday for this year, but they did. It was all due on the same day, which is kind of helpful. Um, I don't know whether that's because of when the exam is. The exam's on Wednesday, so everything's due on a Wednesday. I don't know. But, yeah. Everything was due on the same day. Like I say, it was something was due once every month. I think that's everything. I know this has been a bit scattered and probably quite a long video. Um, but, yeah. Oh, exam. That's what I've told about handbook. The handbook is very, very important for the exam. Um, like I said at the beginning, it is just it's full of like basic formulas and stuff, and basic methods and how to do things. However, you are allowed to take this into your exam, which is super helpful. Um, and more importantly, you can write physically anything you want in this handbook. Kind of feels like cheating, but it's not. I promise you, the tutors will tell you, and all students that I've ever studied this will tell you as well. Very, very useful. You can't put extra bits of paper in, but there are, um, there's like four or five blank pages at the end and like a couple at the beginning, I think. No, no, just a, there's like five completely blank pages at the end. Write whatever you want in those in those pages and you could take this to your exam with it and you're absolutely fine. For example, I went through this specimen exam paper and I went through the online, you know, the answers to this exam paper, which included the method. And I literally wrote down all the method for each question, it, you know, part of my extremely messy handwriting. But I literally wrote down the method for each question that was in that exam 
in the back of this in back of this book, and it's absolutely fine to use. Um, some people take. Uh, let me find a quick example. Like this beginning of it, there's a quick reference material trigonometry ratios. Um, I added how to work out like a triangle with when you know all three sides, but you don't know the angles. Um, some people added stuff to standard der derivatives. Um, added like a little bit extra that's not on there. Write whatever you want, whatever you find useful, write in there. Um, a lot of people, like I say, a lot of people write what they struggle with. Right in there, just write whatever you want. Uh, my only advice is make sure you've at least you know yourself what is belongs to what unit. Um, some people color coded stuff. Write whatever you want. Very very important. Like I say, throughout the entire year, you might not touch this book when you're studying because at the end of the day, you've got your your full books that go through all the method in detail anyway. So you have, you don't necessarily need this. But for the exam, you will 100% need this. Um, it is available as a PDF, but you cannot print off that PDF and then take that PDF into the exam. It has to be this official one. Um, I'm only saying that because there was someone on my forum who said they'd never received that at the beginning, um, but he'd always he just printed it off. Um, but the tutor were telling him that you can't bring in printed off version of it. it has to be this official one. Um, and like I say, you can write whatever you want. Uh, by all means, work through the PDF one throughout the entire year. There's PDF versions of all these books as well. By all means, work through them. But you are only allowed to take this one into the exam at the end. And end of day, that's extra help. Even if even if you're comfortable with the material, I would still just take that with you anyway. Even if you don't write anything in it, just take it with you. It covers all the basics of every unit and like basic methods very very basic methods but it's there it's helpful if you have like a brain fart and forget something chances are it might be in there especially if you wrote in there it's going to be there that's probably super loud i apologize but yeah i think that's it for today's video Um, super long, <laughs> super, super long, but hopefully that's helpful. I will have more um, videos in the future about my other three modules. Don't think they'll be as long as this one because this one's got quite a lot in it. Um, but that also, that is TM255, TM257, which is Cisco one, and TT284, which is web development. I will be covering them in the future, but for now that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, again, apologies for the super long video and me rambling. But yeah, that's that. Thank you for watching. Social media's links in the description. Feel free to ask me any questions in this video or DM me on Instagram or Twitter, whichever you feel most comfortable with. Um, and I'll try and answer. If not, I'll make a video on it. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in a bit.